and welcome to The Diplomat. The most often used term to express the relations between Turkey and Korea is blood brothers because of Turkey's large deployment of troops to South Korea during the Korean War. The Turkish soldiers also gained its fame for bravery, loyalty, and selflessness among all the veterans. Therefore, today on The Diplomat, we sit down with the Turkish ambassador to Korea, Ersin Erçin, to talk about our special bond and also his vision for two countries' future relations. Let's go inside and meet him. Hello, Ambassador. Thank you very much for inviting us to your residence today. Thank you for coming. Welcome to the Turkish residence. Uh -huh. um, if you don't mind, could you take us a tour of your residence and also tell us about the traits and sentiments of Turkish culture that it embodies, please? Of course. Well, you see here the old peninsula of Istanbul. It's a painting in a miniature type, and you will see Marmara Sea and the old type of Ottoman ships here. And uh, you see here the color, overwhelmingly turquoise. It's turquoise uh -huh. is our national color. Uh -huh. uh, we use in most of the paintings and glassware, and you will see lots of turquoise tiles and tulips in the turquoise color. Right, right. Here is, in fact, our dining room. Uh -huh. But since we have just moved in this new residence, uh -huh. I did not have a time to hang them. Mm -hmm. Those are the photographs uh, taken during the Korean War, oh, real photographs. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, you know, uh, the war hero, General Yazıcı, uh -huh. is here. Uh, he was really uh, printed, uh, you know, crowned in the history as a war hero and recognized by everyone. Mm -hmm. Let me show you this photograph one of the most interesting photographs. Those are the orphans, Korean orphans, uh -huh. uh, educated in the Ankara school, which I'm going to tell you later. About 25 of them are still alive out of 600, and I'm in close contact with them. And recently, uh, some 15 of them visited me, and they identified their photographs, and they were terrible. It was a very, very uh, sensible, uh -huh, uh -huh. touching moment. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Thank you very much for showing all of the pictures of our brotherhood. Um, then shall we move and continue our conversation? Sure.
Republic of Turkey. Ambassador, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for coming to the Turkish Embassy. Uh -huh. So, um, you presented your credential to President Moon Jae-in early last year, and then you started your tenure. How has it been like to represent your country here in Korea? I presented my credentials uh, to President Moon on 31st of January uh, last year, and it has been a little less than a year, and it was a perfect year. I, I made a lucky start from uh, several respects. Um, first of all, uh, immediately after my arrival, the peace process in the peninsula started. Then my president visited Korea after a few uh, postponements. So it was a great year. Um, I understand Koreans and Turks share a lot of similarity when it comes to culture and language. Could you share some examples with us, please? That's correct. Uh, in fact, there, there is a little known fact that the Koreans and the Turks uh, met first time not uh, during the Korean War. They met centuries ago. They lived together as very close tribes in the Central Asia and they developed similar cultures. And even the similar languages are languages, Korean and Turkish, have similar grammatical rules. They belong to the same Ural Altaic family. So respect for elderly, the sense of community, mm -hmm. respect for uh, the authority and work ethics mm -hmm. still today uh, continue. And both nations, mm -hmm. uh, while they try to keep their traditions, they are modernizing. That's another common point between Korea and Turkey. So the history of relations between um, Turkey and Korea started in um, 1950 when Turkey dispatched a lot of soldiers to Korea and they fought for um, Korean War. How many Turks were dispatched at that time and what compelled them to come here? Uh, first of all, our uh, leader uh, Atatürk set a very uh, firm principle, peace at home, peace in the world. To keep peace, to preserve peace is extremely important for the Turks. Secondly, Turkey, during the Republican history, was trying to uh, integrate uh, to the Western uh, world, also uh, facing a serious uh, socialist threat from the ex-Soviet Union. Another thing is Korea was perceived, maybe uh, historical reasons, as a brother country. And a decision was taken at the United Nations Security Council and the call was made to the nations to contribute to the UN troops uh, to, that will be uh, sent to Korea. Uh, thousands of volunteers uh, were in, enlisted. Altogether, 21,000 Turkish soldiers were fought and 1,100 of them were uh, fallen mm -hmm. and 462 of them are buried currently in Pusan UN Memorial Cemetery. Another information is everybody thinks that Turkish soldiers only uh, fought uh, during the uh, 1950 and 53. No, they stayed, uh, just uh, continue guarding the north uh, to protect the brothers and sisters of South Korea. They um, not only fought for South Korea, but also they displayed um, great love for humanity. What was it all about? Well, uh, that was a distinctive future, a feature of the Turkish soldiers. Uh, you know, uh, there were 16 uh, states contributed to the war, and Turkish soldiers were sent to the Kunuri, the, the worst, uh, fierce uh, combat place, and uh, really they have displayed a death-defiant heroism there. Their humanitarian approach towards the civilians uh, were their unique feature. They provided medical help. They provided shelter and food to the Korean civilians under very dire war conditions. Most importantly, uh, they took care of the children. They shared their limited amount of uh, daily allowances with the children. They prepared, uh, you know, from their military blankets, 
uh, the clothing for the children. Mm -hmm. And they started, uh, you know, uh, sheltering them under the tents. Mm -hmm. Then in 1953, the number of the orphans were increasing. Mm -hmm. They opened uh, Ankara schools. Ankara schools not only provided food and shelter mm -hmm. for the orphans, but provided education. Korean, English, and Turkish education uh, was provided by Turkish, Korean, uh, Turkish and Korean uh, teachers. So uh, the humanitarian aspect of the Turkish participation in the Korean War is unforgettable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, considering our very special relationship, I believe um, Turks have very special interest uh, when it comes to the peace on the Korean Peninsula. What's your view on the peace process on the Korean Peninsula? Well, uh, of course, uh, being uh, militarily and politically involved in the Korean War in the 50s, Turkey continued to follow very closely uh, the peace uh, in the P uh, Korean Peninsula and prosperity and well-being of uh, the Korean people, the Republic of Korea. And uh, Turkey uh, closely followed the Korean situation and the peace in Korean Peninsula uh, whenever uh, he, it was uh, a UN Security Council member. Mm -hmm. At the last time, uh, we also chaired the, um, the sanctions committee for, uh, of the North Korea at the UN New York. Uh, then uh, we constantly uh, uh, supported the South Korean government's initiatives. Lastly, uh, the initiative started as of 1st of January uh, 2017 our president officially and personally congratulated President Moon when he visited uh, last May uh, Korea and he provided strong support for uh, the leadership uh, shown by President Moon and uh, he even asked, uh, Turkey is fully prepared to contribute uh, whatever uh, it, it will be requested. So we are very much supportive. Our people are were very happy last year to see an inter-Korean thaw and the fast development, uh, uh, you know, among the Korean peoples. Mm -hmm. um, so now let's focus on our relationship. Could you tell us what kind of agendas were discussed during the summit meeting? During the uh, previous president, uh, Abdullah Gül, Turkey and uh, so, uh, Republic of Korea signed uh, a strategic partnership agreement. We are strategic partners. Uh, we signed uh, a free trade agreement in uh, 2012. Mm -hmm. And in 2015, we uh, signed a service agreement under the FTA. So our legal basis was uh, very good. But for the future, the state visit mm -hmm. was very important. Two presidents had very long and candid uh, discussions. During uh, that state visit, high targets were set by two presidents. For example, for annual trade, uh, $15 billion uh, of annual trade was mentioned. That's our uh, now new target. And Turkey is becoming a hub you know, with its uh, connectivity, the, the means of connectivity reaching easily to 50 countries around. Istanbul, mm -hmm. uh, specifically, is uh, turning into a hub for the foreign companies. Mm -hmm. Also, we want uh, uh, more Korean companies to come to Turkey, you know, to make investments. And one of the uh, agreements or MOUs was signed was on the uh, technological uh, issues, and we very much want uh, to increase our cooperation in the science and technology field. Uh, with South Korea. So it was an excellent trip. It was yet another milestone in our relations. Uh -huh, I see. Um, among all the areas you just mentioned, um, what would be some of the most um, remarkable accomplishments that we have achieved? There are also other fields like uh, Fourth Industrial Revolution. And uh, a memorandum of understanding was signed between our ministries in the presence of the uh, presidents uh, last May. So uh, in the light of this memorandum of understanding, we would like to cooperate uh, in the field of port industrial revolution. 
the artificial intelligence and the in uh, Internet of Things and big data and robotics. You are among the five major countries in the world which is seriously dealing with a uh, fourth industrial revolution after US, uh, Germany, among China and Japan, and uh, Korea is a friend and brother. I think uh, we will have a, a big niche there uh, to cooperate together. Um, I understand that Turkey and Korea have been cooperating in various fields of PPP, um, public-private partnership. Uh, what are the most representative examples and what is your vision when it comes to our PPP projects? Korean companies uh, are best known foreign companies in Turkey. Uh, the reason is uh, they were uh, among the con uh, constructors uh, of mega projects in Turkey. Uh, like, uh, you know, uh, Yavuz Selim Bridge, Eurasia Tunnel, major projects in Istanbul and in Turkey uh, were realized uh, through the participation of uh, Korean companies. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a very interesting example for the Turks to work with the uh, Korean companies. Now, currently, two Turkish companies together with uh, SK and Dialim, two uh, major Korean companies, they are constructing the longest suspension bridge of the world, Chanakkale Bridge, and uh, partly financed uh, by the Korean government. And uh, when it is completed, it will be the longest bridge in the world. It's a, a very big project. And uh, my president, uh, when he was uh, talking with the major uh, companies here, he mentioned also the project of uh, Canal Istanbul, Canal Istanbul is a, one of the biggest projects of the 21st century. It will, that will be a canal uh, from the Black Sea to Marmara Sea, 42 kilometers long, bigger than Suez Canal, bigger, uh, larger than Panama Canal. Uh -huh. And uh, that will have uh, five suspension bridges over. So this, that uh, major project is also very much uh, expected uh, to be, uh, you know, assumed by uh, the Korean companies. Mm -hmm. The tender uh, will be uh, announced soon. So Turkey is very much counting and trusting uh, the Korean companies in realizing uh, mega public projects in Turkey. Mm -hmm. And also Turkish companies uh, work perfectly well with the Korean companies and they started uh, getting bits jointly in the third countries. Uh, one tender was won uh, by Turkish and Korean companies in Astana, in Kazakhstan, uh, last year. Mm -hmm. They started constructing a, a long highway uh, in Kazakhstan. Then it will continue because both Turkey and Korean government is supporting these kind of joint bids uh, in the third countries, especially in the Central Asia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I see. Um, President Moon Jae-in's new northern policy aims to um, not only deepen Korea's ties with um, Eurasia, but also foster um, prosperity of the whole region. And um, of course, Turkey is one of the most um, important um, nations in Eurasia, I believe. And what is your view on um, President Moon Jae-in's new northern policy? Well, uh, new northern policy is very much uh, supported uh, by my government because it will not only create peace and prosperity in, in the North uh, Korea, but also in the wider region. So uh, forging closer ties with the neighboring countries, especially with uh, Russia and China, will greatly contribute uh, to uh, both security, stability, and prosperity of the region. So we very much support it because we are the westernmost country of Asia and Korea is the easternmost country uh, of Asia. Uh, we are on both sides and our purpose is the same, uh, create a peaceful and prosperous atmosphere and Turkey is, uh, has uh, historic, religious and ethnic ties with Central Asia. And Turkey is literally a Eurasian country. Mm -hmm. 
We are in, uh, on both, uh, you know, located both in Europe and Asia. So our relations, especially since 1992, since the, you know, after the breakup of the Soviet Union, our relations uh, were very, uh, developed very fast with uh, Central Asian countries and uh, we, uh, Turkish companies uh, contributed a lot uh, to the, uh, especially infrastructure projects and uh, despite uh, a long and uh, little com complicated relations with Russians. Mm -hmm. Now Turkey enjoys excellent political and economic relations with Russia. We are to, uh, trying to solve together regional problems. And uh, only last year, uh, my uh, uh, president met 25 times uh, with Putin, the Russian uh, president, and they already uh, met at the beginning of the, this year. So our relations are, uh, you know, uh, improving fast with Russia and Turkish-Russian uh, relations will definitely uh, have a, a positive impact on wider Eura Eurasia region. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is our developing relations with China and the Chinese project, Rod and Belt, is very much supported by Turkey. We are also one of the shareholders of Asia Investment, Investment Bank. And Turkey's Middle Corridor project is uh, complementary to Rod and Belt project. So all these initiatives and projects mm -hmm. have one key word, connectivity mm -hmm. and energy. So uh, both uh, President Moon's initiative on new northern policy and China uh, Chinese uh, initiative, Rod and Belt, Turkey's initiative, uh, uh, middle corridor and uh, increased transportation, railway uh, connections from maybe Korea all the way to Turkey and to, to Europe. So all those projects are intersecting. So and, and mutually uh, complementary and it, they will definitely create a synergy in the long run. So we are very much supportive of President Moon's initiative. Um, Turkey and Korea developed um, their um, diplomatic ties and also very close relations over the past six decades. And I believe we are very close and special, but there's always room to improve. Uh, what are your plans to even further improve our um, cooperation and exchanges as a Turkish ambassador to Korea? Well, you know, as a Turkish ambassador, I feel very privileged and honored because I I'm treated here as a brother uh, and the representative of a brother country. Uh, so uh, my agenda is always a positive one with Korea. I'd like the Korean brothers and sisters know more about my culture. I want further cultural exchanges. That's why I, uh, you know, uh, try to improve inter-academic relations. I keep uh, visiting uh, the rectors and the deans. I give lectures at the universities. I invite the Turkish academic academics here. I try to improve academic inter-academic relations between Turkey and Korea because I know perfectly well uh, that uh, there is a very sound and very uh, firm educational system and discipline in Korea. You know, behind this fast development, uh, so uh, that's why inter-academic cooperation is extremely important for me. In the economic uh, field, uh, increased investments are all uh, will always continue uh, in our relations. Uh, increased exchanges also, uh, thanks to the increased flights uh, of Turkish and uh, Korean airlines, uh, that will be also another way. Also, I should tell uh, Korea, South Korea is uh, the most reliable, the best ally of Turkey in the region. Uh, we, we share the same norms and uh, international values, the respect uh, for human rights, uh, respect for elderly, and uh, respect for international law. In all those uh, things, uh, international norms and values, two countries share a lot. And we respect each other, and we love each other. And there is no any one single problem that uh, is that is uh, exploited by your government. You are very sensitive to our problems. We are sensitive to your pro problems, and uh, we are mutually supportive. So, uh, on that basis, our relations uh, could be uh, taken.
to the higher levels, and that's my intention during my tenure uh, in Korea. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much for your time and also sharing your insights with us today. Thank you very much. A diplomat is somebody who represents his country, protects and promotes his nation's interests abroad. And my philosophy in the diplomatic career is to compromise on a win-win concept because I draw the conclusion from 37 years long career is that negotiations can only yield positive results if they are reflecting beneficial and advantages to both parties involved. <laughs>